One of the most important things in psychological research is how variables are operationally defined. In order to operationally define a variable, we need to be able to identify and name it, and we need to be able to draw the distinction between predictor and outcome variables. We'll start with the naming, talk about the difference between types of variables, and figure out how to operationally define variables at the end. The name of a variable is very simple, but a lot of students tend to overthink it. When we're looking for a variable name, we want something short. Always try to think of a variable name that is short enough that it could go as a label for an axis on a graph. The name isn't all the details about the variable, it is just something that lets us quickly know what someone is talking about. For instance, if I'm measuring the effect of the amount of money someone earns on performance on a certain attention task, I wouldn't call the variable amount of money earned. I would call it money earned, or even simpler, money. This helps me quickly know what you're talking about. It's also important to distinguish between names and levels. A variable has only one name, but each variable has at least two levels. Levels are the quantity that we're measuring, and the variable name is the thing being measured. For instance, the variable gender has two levels. The variable money earned can take any positive value. The variable day of the week has seven levels, and there are tons of examples. Once we have identified the variable names, we need to figure out which is the predictor variable and which is the outcome variable. This is pretty straightforward. If your hypothesis is that money earned impacts performance on a certain attention task, the money earned is what changes the performance. So that's the variable that predicts performance. It's the predictor variable. The variable that is being impacted is the outcome variable. Another way of thinking about it 